Hey everybody, welcome back. This is RV East Coast. My name is Eli. My beautiful bride is not here with me today. She had to take a last minute uh, phone call. Uh, she's trying to keep her job and also trying to homeschool our kids. But as we promised, today we have an interview with you with Jed Wood. He's the president of the Pennsylvania Campground Owners Association. And we are hoping that he's gonna be able to shed a little bit of light about when we'll be able to go camping, when we'll be able to go back RVing and also about the general situation of campground owners like himself and many other campground owners around the, the entire state. Before we move into the interview I want to remind you that a few days ago we recorded an interview with the CEO of KOA Toby O'Rourke and she gave us a great interview great information I'm gonna put the link to her interview right here so after you watch this video maybe you want to go and check that one as well. So without further ado, here's our interview with Mr. Jed Wood. Hey everybody, as we promised, I have on the line Jed Wood. Jed Wood is a good friend. He is the president of the Pennsylvania Campground Owners Association. And he's also the owner of Blue Rocks Campground, really amazing place. So let's dig in and let's talk with Jed. How are you, Jed? I'm doing okay today. Yeah, thank you for the call and the opportunity to speak with you and, and just to kind of bring you up to date on what's going on uh, in the camping business in Pennsylvania. Yeah, we so, are so thankful of you taking the time to do do this, Jet. Thank you very much. So, Jet, um, as the president of the Campground Owners Association, you have been um, in constant communication with legislators, um, and you have been trying to get campgrounds open. Um, so can you tell me a little bit, what have you been up to? And the question that everybody wants to know, when we'll be able to go camping again? So I could answer some of your question. I can't answer it all, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. uh, what I can tell you is what we started with was the most they made it a possibility for businesses to apply for a waiver. Um, what we did was as, as our association of Pennsylvania Campground Owners Association, um, we approached the governor's office on behalf of all the campground owners that are part of our association. And uh, we were granted a waiver. Uh, and that was March 21st, I think. That was our first waiver. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it looked pretty good. It looked like we were going to be able to be open with uh, some restrictions and uh, some social distancing practices and whatnot. But it looked like something that we were going to be able to do. And, uh, well, the next week or two, things had progressed in Pennsylvania. And along with that came the governor's uh, stay in place order that ordered all residents of Pennsylvania to stay in their homes mm -hmm. uh, unless they needed to do essential running or something like that. Therefore, it kind of eliminated all recreational camping, all recreational stays at any place uh, throughout the state. And uh, with that, it pretty much put most of all campgrounds out of business. So right now, the only uh, legally operating uh, campers or legally operating campgrounds have uh, essential workers or full-time RVers with them. Somebody that uh, lives in their camper, it's not a recreational place, but it's something essential to their uh, way of life. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not necessarily recreational or vacation time. So uh, that's uh, it's been devastating to campground owners because mm -hmm. a lot of us spend from November until April without much of an income whatsoever. Yes. And uh, in, you know, the end of March, the beginning of April, we start to ramp things up and we start to get some income coming in. Reservations were looking great in early March. Uh, I know... Our park, along with many others uh, that I've talked to, were on par for having a record year, record-setting year this year. It looked, looked great. We had a mild winter. People were thinking about camping all winter. So um, so people were ready to camp, and the phones were ringing, and we were taking reservations. Um, when this stay-at-home order uh, 
came into place it kind of pulled the rug out from underneath of all of our campground yeah, owners absolutely um, uh, it didn't stop the phones from ringing but instead of income coming in it was uh, uh refunds going out and um that was for a lot of reservations uh easter weekend uh mother's day weekend you know those uh, wow. early early holiday weekends have have been uh tough uh, you know refunding people on um right now the governor has a uh, phase three phase program in order to get pennsylvanians back to business mm -hmm. and um we really don't know where campgrounds fall into that at this point uh one of the, the our latest correspondence with the governor's office has been a plea um that we would be considered at least into uh phase one possibly phase two but we're requesting to be in considered in the phase one of uh, the get back to business plan that he has, yes. but we're really not really, we're really not sure how that's going to go. Um, so I don't have a definite date. Our first stay at home order was until April 30th. And uh, that was a blanket stay at home order for all businesses, all residents in Pennsylvania uh, to be closed except for, uh, essential businesses that had a waiver to be open. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the only way that campgrounds were open were for those full-time RVers. Uh, so that would not even can, that would not even include seasonal guests or anybody that has a permanent, oh, wow. permanent type camper. So even, um, even if you are a seasonal and you have your, your, pretty much the, the rest of the year pay, you're not allowed to be at your site? You are not, not right now. No, because of the fact that uh, it's recreational use of the campground is, yes. is strictly prohibited right now. So if you have a home that is your residence uh, and your campground is your vacation spot or your, uh, your getaway, your vacation spot, uh, slash getaway recreational place is off limits right now, uh, according to the governor's stay at home order. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that's where we're at. Yeah, um, Jed, it's so sad and so unfortunate to, to hear about all these. Um, what most people don't really think and, uh, about these is that in many other states where we have warmer weather, um, well, campgrounds are having a constant flow uh, of revenue throughout the entire year. But campgrounds like in our area in Pennsylvania, every single day is crucial uh, yeah. in order to stay afloat, right? Can, yes. you, can you illustrate a little bit what is the situation of the campground owner like you and, and many other of, of, of our favorites? And because you know, Jet, Everybody has a favorite campground. We, we like to call it base campground is the one that is close to your home or maybe yeah. it's your favorite. And then you develop this relationship with the owner, with the, with the staff. You arrive, they know you. And so yeah. as a guest, we learn to care for, for, for the owner, for the staff. So can you help us illustrate what is the situation for people like you right now? Well, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, it's devastating. Um, it is a devastating situation. Uh, there's, there's been, I've been in the camping business for 31 years and we've come through, uh, times of recession and, uh, times when camping early on, when I was a young kid, camping wasn't as popular as it is today. So there were lean times. Um, but they were very short. We were we were nervous for a little while when uh, when we went through a recession, but uh, camping really held on, and we actually had seen growth throughout those recession years. So we were very blessed um, by being in a fairly low cost uh, vacation environment uh, that people could get away with their families. So we were very blessed by being able to be in the business in those times when. Uh, when we were a little unsure of what was going to happen. But now this here is something that, you know, none of us have really seen coming. 
uh, when we first heard of what was going on, we thought, oh, well, this is going to be maybe like the recession type of thing where people, you know, we may get busier because people are going to want to get away and people are going to want to get out and, and uh, escape reality for a little bit and and isolate do their social distancing at a campground or whatnot and and we thought maybe this is an opportunity for us maybe we're, maybe this is okay yeah. i mean we could we could be responsible and adhere to the guidelines that are set forth by the government um you know for the health and safety of the public and the community and stuff like that but um once these the governor of pennsylvania put in this stay-at-home order that uh, pretty much banned all recreational travel uh, and whatnot, it really has been devastating. Now, we're a fairly small business, but uh, um, we did apply for every one of the uh, uh, programs that were out there, the PPP program and the SBA, um, the Economic Disaster Relief uh, program, uh, also, uh, uh, community programs locally. And, um, as an owner of the park, my brother and I, we own and operate a campground together and I have four kids and my brother has five and our wives both work with us. And this is our only source of income is the campground. And, um, when the campground is shut down, we are we our cash flow is cut off completely and i'm sure that's the same way with many campgrounds throughout our state uh, we we applied for unemployment as business owners as well yeah and uh, that has been a struggle the system is broken and overloaded um, we applied for the uh, ppp program and we did not get in the first round of that uh, because uh, even though our application was put in on the first day, it still there was too many applicants to be considered, and we're just a small time operation compared to compared to many. But uh, yeah. it's one hundred percent of our livelihood. So um, to say that it's devastating for us to be out of business is an understatement. It is an understatement, and um, there are some parks uh, throughout our state that have quite large operating expenses, even when they're closed. And just to make those expenses, it's, we don't know how we're going to do it. So, you know, I know personally what, what we have done is, um, I don't know if you're still there. I was yeah, uh, I'm here. just cut off a little bit, but uh, personally for our own business, like I said, we weren't eligible for, well, I don't know that we're not eligible, but we're in the waiting for those other programs that we filled out the applications for on the first day that they were available, you know, getting yeah. it away. Dad, yeah, I, I wish I could tell our viewers, if you have a reservation, just just keep it. Even if you're not planning to go, don't ask for a refund. That might be, um, that could be in some cases a, um, a selfish uh, request yeah. because we are all in the same boat. We, we all have limitations, you know, uh, right. in, in, in our case at home, we had to take a pay cut from work. And, and right. that, of course, reflects on vacationing. Many of our yeah. fellow uh, RVers uh, had to uh, file for unemployment. But as I mentioned it earlier, we do care for you guys, the, the owners of the campgrounds that, 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 we, that we constantly go to. And I wanted to ask you, is there any is there anything that we can do as regulars at your campgrounds to to help you as business owners or uh, how how can we be better guests uh, well right now and when 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 the campgrounds open in the near future hopefully well uh, the the biggest thing that I would say um, that would be appreciated from all the campgrounds is you know, if you have the ability to do so, maybe give a campground a call and see if you could buy a gift certificate or something like that, um, you know, or make a reservation for a time that we definitely should be out of the woods, you know, mm -hmm. June, July, August, you know, September, sometime like that, you know, um, 
and just encourage your friends to do the same thing. You know, we're, we're not looking for anybody to, uh, sacrifice something that, that they're not going to get anything in return for, you know, but yeah. if, uh, if we could look forward to, you know, those great days around the campfire, um, maybe just sharing that excitement, um, with your friends is the best way of, of helping out a, a campground owner. You know, I think that that that's probably the best way. The other thing is what's going to happen is when we do get back to business, there's going to be restrictions that campgrounds are going to look a little bit different. I yes. know that uh, just getting back to business are uh, if we are able to go back to the first waiver that we receive early on in March, uh, it would require us to practice social distancing like you see in a regular grocery store or, you know, big box store now. Um, and also, uh, there'll be very limited use to the facilities as far yes. as the parks, like uh, playgrounds and parks. We're hoping that when the time comes, we'll be able to open the swimming pool. We're not really sure what the uh, restrictions are going to be with how we operate that. Um, we're navigating these waters every day, trying to figure out what our best practices are going to be. Yes, so, that is actually one of the questions I, I had in mind to ask you was when we open uh, again, how much the camping the campground experience is going to change. Uh, in our case, um, time at the campground is heavily spent at the pool and at the playground. Uh, right. But I honestly don't think that's going to be the case, uh, yeah. probably for the rest of the year. Yeah. So some of the things that we're, we're thinking about doing is we have a pretty good craft program. We like to think it's a pretty good craft program. Um, but one of the things that we're thinking of doing is, is trying to implement some things that, that the campers could do on their campsites. You know, if it's a craft idea that they could do on their campsites and maybe share it through our Facebook page or, or um, another form of communication to get it out there. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that we plan on doing. We also plan on, we have a snack bar here at our campground and, and one of the things that we'd like to do is I, I know that we're not going to be able to do uh, formal seating like we normally have had in, in our snack bar, but uh, delivering food to campsites and, uh, you know, window side pickup, you know, yeah. that's something that I think that uh, that we'll be we'll be looking to do. Yeah, um, I think that is going to be also time to I mean, when do you think about it? RV life is one of the best ways to be safe out there. Right. And because you're technically practicing uh, social distancing, the, the, the right. sites are pretty separated from each other. Like in a hotel, you're not sharing the same air conditioner system. If any, right. if any virus is airborne um, and many campgrounds like yours are blessed with uh, plenty of hiking trails. Um, for those of you that don't know, actually Blue, Blue Rocks um, is a beautiful shaded area. They have these amazing uh, rock formations. I'm gonna show some video here. It's truly sure. breathtaking. And also uh, it connects to hiking trails. Uh, one of them go to two very iconic overlooks in Pennsylvania. What, which are those, uh, Jet? It would be the Pulpit Rock Lookout Point and the uh, the Pinnacle Point right off the Appalachian Trail. Yeah, and um, and the, and and the trail by your campground also connects to the Appalachian Trail. Sure right? does. Yeah, we have two trails that that lead right off the campground and connect to the Appalachian Trail. Yeah, so I'm guessing it's gonna be uh, a good time for families to start thinking about um, how to prepare for the changes uh, coming. To your regular camping uh, experience, uh, it's gonna be more time spending at your rig, maybe um, sh sharing a good meal by the fire, which is, by the way, maybe one of the things that I miss the most is the smell yeah. of yeah. <laughs> a good yeah. campfire. Uh, but yeah, well, Jed, I'm I'm so, so 
Uh-huh. One of the things that I wanted to just mention to you that uh, sometimes we don't think about it as campers ourselves um, is the impact that campgrounds have on their local communities. So we're, our point of view is, man, just allow us to have campers come because it's the ultimate social distancing you know, way of life. I mean, you could be by yourself and whatnot. But I think that what the biggest concerns are for our um, governing authorities is the fact that we're bringing people from out of the area into our communities to shop at our local yes. stores and our local grocery mm-hmm. stores and supermarkets and gas stations. And these are people that are coming from areas that were hot spots or considered, you know, um, hot spots. And in our particular area, within a uh, 10, 12 mile radius of us, uh, we are in a very rural area. I don't think that there's any COVID-19 patients in our area. Mm-hmm. Um, in our local township, there's been there's been a couple hundred people tested for it, but no one came up positive. And uh, and also in our in our township that's next to us, the same type of thing. But when our neighbors start seeing people coming in from all over the place, that's when the red flags are being thrown up. And and we had already been questioned by our local municipality mm-hmm. about the legitimacy of anybody that that is coming in and out of a campground right now. So the uh, the communities in which the campgrounds are located, they are feeling not only the economic pressure of yeah. not being able to be in business, but when they do allow anybody to come in, the repercussions from the community, you know, and the reputation that we've been building for the last, our campground has been in business since 1930. So we've wow. spent a long time developing relation, close relationships with all of our local communities. We, you know, and, and, like many other campground uh, campgrounds throughout the state, we sponsor our little league baseball teams and our uh, wrestling teams and football teams, and and we're in all the programs and we're part of the community and everything that we do. So, for us to completely disregard um, the welfare of our community is that's very irresponsible of us as well you know so not only are we adhering to the governor's orders but we're also trying to do the best we can to be good citizens too so we want we want to get back to business but we want to get back to business in a safe way that uh that everybody can feel comfortable doing it um we want to be responsible with uh the uh the gifts that we've been given with uh the ability to host people and um we just can't wait to get back to doing it and can't wait to start seeing our campers and, you know, sitting around the campfire and whatnot. Yeah. Um, uh, I think I'm pretty sure I speak um, not only in behalf of my family, but also in behalf of everybody who watches this channel and the RVing community uh, in general. Uh, when I tell you that, you know, we are deeply sorry you're, you're going through this uh, and, and I hope we can, resume uh, soon and, and you know I hope that that travelers like us can continue to come to your campground help keep you afloat uh, uh, help bring revenue to the township the, that's kind of pretty much the essence of this channel when, when we yeah. review a campground we always go out and say well we also try this little restaurant which is five minutes away from the campground there is right. a grocery store that is only 10 minutes away that have really good prices, you know, so yeah. we hope we can we can continue doing that in the future. And at the same time, I want to use this opportunity uh, as a call to every RVer out there to please have grace when we come back and when we open the campgrounds. Don't be such a... I don't want to use a word that I'm thinking of. <laughs> when you call the front desk complaining about everything, understand yeah. that when we open back, these businesses are going to be hurting. They're going to they're gonna try to be recovering. They're going to be very, very short staffed. So 
I hope that everybody, Jed, comes back with grace and patience uh, yeah. in mind when we reopen. Well, we look forward to brighter days ahead, you know, and, and uh, we're just, uh, you know, hoping and praying that uh, this ends soon and we get back to business and, uh, you know, and we could, you know, get back to hosting happy campers. That's kind of our goal. So, yeah. well, yep. Thank you so much for your time, Jed. Um, I'll let you go back to work, um, trying to keep your campground uh, <laughs> in working order and also trying to help other campground owners in the area. Thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me. We'll see you. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was informative and I hope we can all go camping out there. When we do go back, please, Dress yourself with patience and grace. And remember that these campground uh, owners are business owners. They are parents, they have kids, they have families, and they have been struggling big time. So do not expect a campground to have a regular operation uh, when they reopen. Um, and yeah, let's embrace this uh, upcoming um, RV lifestyle that we're gonna have uh, over the next year. Once again, thank you for watching. My name is Eli, this is RV East Coast. If you haven't, please subscribe. And I personally will really appreciate it if you drop a comment and give us a like. I will see you on the next video.